Welcome to the I Know Bado podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the I Know Bado podcast. Ka! Manacha from the local 2 and 8 studios. I'm here with my brother, Das Fluten Duten. <laughs> I love it. We're gonna stick. I told you we're gonna ride that one out. Das Fluten Duten is just gonna get rode out <laughs> until the sunset. I, it, it's amazing. I actually saw something online that said, uh, you know, for those of you who who think that the German language is just a bunch of nonsense, <laughs> I present to you Das Fluten Duten. <laughs> And over to Gabe Johnson. Dave, how's it going? It's going excellent. Uh, we're going to just move forward this week. Uh, we're going to try something. Well, we're going to try moving the podcast along quicker hmm. and get started faster. Okay. <laughs> How about that? Does that sound like a great plan? Mm, sounds before, like an escape pod. It does sound like an escape pod. Real quick, uh, before we do, thank you to the local two and eight. The local two and eight. Shout out to the PJ and the crew over there. A delicious, delicious uh, eats and treats. Uh, Valentine's Day coming up. Check them out. They always have one of the best specials uh, and uh, date nights you can possibly have. So check them out for Valentine's Day. The local 218 right here in the beautiful town of Brainerd. Uh, have, let's just, have you had the lobster? I the have, Lobster tail? I have had the lobster tail. Lobster tails are delicious. Can't mm-hmm. go wrong. Can't go wrong. How do you feel about the lobster tail? I haven't eaten lobster in like 10 years. Why? It just hasn't been. Haven't had the opportunity. Not a lobster guy, huh? Oh, no, I love it. Oh. I mean, the, the, the one time I ate it 10 this... years ago, I thought it was great. What the hell is going on with your life? Like, you're an adult. You can have lobster. You can go. No, the only thing I am allowed to eat is pizza. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. The occasional but, chicken wing. Thanks okay. for a lobster pizza. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna bring. You could make a, you could make lobster in your pizza oven. Oh, it would sure. make everything taste like fish for, probably. For sure. But I mean, I do. We do the seafood pizza. You it's do, got, yeah. It's got shrimp and crab on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I eat crab. This blows my mind. Like, and I, I'm not. I'm actually not a huge lobster guy. I like it. It doesn't uh, wow me the way that it wows other people. Um, but it's delicious. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, you know, it, it's a fantastic food. Uh, mainly because you're just soaking up butter and, well, and right. eating the goodness. But I'm all, I'm just not a big seafood guy in general. We've talked about this before. I almost drowned when I was eight years old, and so uh, <laughs> in a lake. In a lake. Uh, <laughs> then four <I> ate lobsters. <laughs> great, great story. I th- in every boat you have to have the seat cushion, the flotation device. I put that on like a backpack, and then went out in the water and. Uh, Got stuck like a bobber upside down. My older brother had to save me. But because of that, seafood tastes like dying to me. It just tastes like drowning. That's what it tastes like. So I'm not a huge seafood guy. But um, you have the ability to do that. I'm going to get you some. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to PJ. I'm going right. to get some lobster. I'm going to bring it over to you. Yes, please. Local 218. Don't tell Scotty. He does the news. Huh? Uh, um. Literally said we're going to just get started. And then you <laughs> went on a six minute tangent well, about Pardon lobster. me for wanting to talk about the sponsor. <laughs> uh, a pet fish commits credit card fraud on owner using a Nintendo Switch. Well, did it come or why? <laughs> mm-hmm. The entire heist started as an experiment to see if a fish could complete Pokemon Scarlet and Violet unassisted. To do it, Japanese YouTuber Mute Kimaru channel set up a webcam focused on his fishbowl. Motion tracking software monitored ah. the fish as they swam across an overlaid grid populated with controller okay. inputs. Okay, I was going to say, how the hell does this work? Oh. If the fish paused or changed direction, the correlating controller input registered in the game. And so you just left the game on and just <clears throat> wondered if you can beat the game by just basically literally flopping around. Right. Hmm. Or there's a similar uh, like Twitch plays. Okay. Well, where they'll there has been Twitch plays Pokemon, where it's just the Twitch chat and everybody just like <laughs> types in A B select start up down uh, yeah, and everybody I, I whoever like gets in it takes all those inputs and I, just plays the game and it takes thousands yes. of hours, but eventually they will beat the game. I like that. <clears throat> I'm gonna try that out. So it's a similar concept, just using uh, one single fish. One single fish. Yeah, swims over things. Well, what happened is uh, the game crashed. And so it went back to the yep. the, the uh, home screen, and from there, the inputs eventually made it into the eShop, and he started buying fish things. Buying. <laughs> the fish started buying things. <laughs> and you have footage of this, too. Yep. That's the best part. Yep. There's a YouTube video. 
of a fish just making you go bankrupt. <laughs> well, Two dollars in its head. It only ended up costing him about four dollars. Oh, but, that's it, how? But, how? Um, what is he buying? I don't know. Just uh, a couple of skins or something. A couple of skins. What is it? What kind of skin does a fish pick? It's like <laughs> Ari- like yes. Ariel from the Little Mermaid. This fish is picking legs. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, again, this is one of those great segments of, uh, you know, you thought about whether you could do it. You really should have thought of, (laughs) should you do it? That's awesome. I had like heard murmurings of that, but didn't look into it enough. Uh, I didn't realize that they were trying to beat Pokemon with it. And that's the new Pokemon game as well. Uh, Scarlet. Yeah. 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 So, uh, crazy, crazy. Did they continue the experiment? I need to know, did this fish win Pokemon? Uh, let's see. This, this fish broke Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At what point does the game just go like, enough, enough, <laughs> crash? It went on for a total of seven hours okay. before the fish finally managed to power down the Switch. Okay. Uh, it purchased a new avatar, downloaded the N64 emulator, yeah. and got PayPal to set Send him a setup confirmation email and change his Nintendo. <laughs> oh, this could have went bad. Ch- change his Nintendo account name from Mute Kimaru to Fish. As as a Ro- fish is known yeah, to do. R O W. It basically says row away. <laughs> row away, 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 away. Oh man, <clears throat> I love it. That's great. What a, what a good one to start off with. Yeah. Uh, the, the guy contacted Nintendo, explained what happened, and they refunded his uh-huh. 500 yen. Oh, okay. Which uh-huh. is about $4. Yeah, yeah. Nicely done, Nintendo. Right. Next! <clears throat> Rockford, Illinois. According to a new study, men who are convinced their penises are smaller than average have a higher desire for fast cars. <laughs> Studies confirm. <laughs> We've all suspected. There's many years. Fast cars. It doesn't say anything about big trucks. No, no. <clears throat> high trucks. Not big trucks. Yeah, high. Yeah. Loud. Yeah. Uh, the University College London released the study entitled Small Penises and Fast Cars, Evidence for a Psychological Link, in which researchers told some sub- subjects that the average penis size was seven inches and other subjects that it was four inches. Oh, okay. They, oh, this is a good study. I like that. Now, yeah. how do you feel about portions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I would like it if they just showed two pictures. One was just an explanation of the average size of a penis and then just a picture of a porch, a Porsche. <laughs> and, and how do you react? Smiley face, frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be way better. Science. (laughs) Yeah. They just pick the friend they know. Uh, The test subjects then used a slider to determine how much they wanted fast cars, according Mm. to GM authority. The subjects were also presented with other luxury goods and statistics to conceal the true nature of the study. Okay. Interesting. Uh, according to the study, younger men under 29 years of age showed little linkage between penis size and oh. the desire for fast cars. But in the 30 and older group, quote, men who thought they had a relatively small penis, a relatively small penis, rated the sports cars higher, huh. even into old age. I'd like to know what, what go the opposite direction. I'd like to know if, if you said the average penis size is four inches and there's just a bunch of dudes walking around with their chest <laughs> puffed out. Like what what do they like? Yeah. What are they what are they interested in? Small penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. The study found that in that group those who were convinced they were unusually well endowed became less interested in sports cars. Um, oh, I suppose. They're just interested in women at that point, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm go put this puppy in use. <laughs> <laughs> Call my wife. Uh, the researchers added that further experiments would be necessary to see if perceptions of wealth and intelligence also contributed ah. to the need for speed among men, okay. but suggested that perhaps there is just something specific linking cars and penises in the male psyche. And perhaps maybe old guys like sports cars more than young yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you made them sad. 
So you made you made the old guys sad. <laughs> yeah. Old, what we've confirmed is sad old guys like fast cars. <laughs> science. <laughs> science. Science. Aww. Uh, yeah, that's great. I I I would like to trace the money on this because you know you know how grants work. You know yeah. how funding works. Uh, I'd like to trace the money on this and find out how many of our taxpayer dollars and for what what specific taxpayer dollars because all taxpayer dollars get put into some kind of uh, budget and and have an earmark of some sort and then there's gymnastics that are used in order to get them to uh, funding of figuring out if penis and uh, fast cars have a correlation I, I like it I want it but I want to, somebody do the math and trace the money back for me I want to find out where these dollars were supposed to go. Probably the National Endowment. Of the, <laughs> the Endowment of the Arts. <laughs> All right, next. I like that one. <clears throat> the Waiheke Island community, I believe this is New Zealand, okay. uh, is sizzling on social media as the anonymous Surfdale Sausager plants snags. <laughs> wrapped in bread and dressed in butter and tomato sauce in their mailboxes. Oh. I believe a snag is a sausage. Mm. Sounds like it. Sounds like a sausage wrapped and smothered. Well, well, the snag is wrapped and smothered. Wrapped in bread and dressed in butter and tomato ah, sauce. Ah, dressed. Yes. Nice. In butter. Yeah, that sounds... Well, you'd be upset because now you got a soggy, soggy sausage in your <laughs> mailbox. How did... <laughs> If you want a sports car. Right. How does that correlate to a sports car? <laughs> so, yeah. What if, what if my wiener is? <laughs> what, what if it's soggy? What, what if I have a soggy penis? What if it's soggy? <laughs> <laughs> now I want a bicycle. <laughs> One of the sausager's first victim, victims, Jacob, says he has been targeted regularly since last April. It happens at least once a month at the very bare minimum. When it first happened, he thought it was probably just some drunk person who had misplaced their dinner. Quote, it happened again and again to the point where I messaged my friends thinking they were playing a joke on me. And then all of them had photos of sausages in their letterboxes. That was when I knew it was a serious problem. That's a penis. It's tearing my friend group apart. It's tearing Waikiki apart because we just don't know who it is. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If all your friends, yes. yeah, is anybody it, besides your friends getting sausages in so, their letterbox? Sounds very targeted. <laughs> Jacob said he suspected more than one culprit could be involved. All of mm. his friends. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Quote: I know what? you're no, out I, there. I'm getting it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really. Yeah. They're really all just messing with one dude. <clears throat> Quote, I know you're out there. Just know one thing. You will be unmasked, and your horrible deeds will be known by the community, and you will be shunned. Shunned. He said nobody had felt hungry enough to eat the sausages. And well, they I, just got photographed and disposed of properly. I, hungry enough to eat a soggy sausage out of your mailbox? It, no thanks. I'm not... You're pretty damn hungry. Yeah, I, I'm not eating random food out of my mailbox. That's not happening. My, excuse me, my letterbox. Yes. Uh, I don't know who the mad butcher is, but, it, well, his name is Sir Peter Leach, hmm. L-E-I-T-C-H. Familiar? Sure. You guys mm. familiar with no. the famous... Sounds like we should know him. The mad butcher, Sir Peter Leach, who is a Wahiki resident, says he has never heard of the incidents and is yet to be targeted himself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it's just... I don't know why this article <laughs> ends with that. That's, that's the last paragraph in the article. <laughs> Like, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> no one else had ever heard of this ever. <laughs> no, specifically this guy. The mad this butcher. This guy, the mad butcher, has never heard Somebody's of it. Somebody's not fucking <laughs> with the guy named <laughs> yeah. the mad butcher. Uh, man, all right. New Zealand. Waikiki. <clears throat> why he, why yeah, he, I, know, I don't know. I know. I'm saying it right. Yeah. But it it's sounded W-A-I-H-E-K-E. Like, -E. It sounded like Waikiki, which is mm -hmm. right. Florida. Waikiki no, Beach? Hawaii. Is it Hawaii? Hawaii. That Hawaiian. does Hawaii. It does sound Hawaiian. Hawaiian. I, I'm sorry. I had I had something else on my mind here. Florida which is, Keys. Yes, but not, I not specifically the, had... Yes, I'm... I'm the Florida Hikikis. Waikiki, Florida, Florida, Florida <laughs> Hikikis. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, my brain is, is cross-referencing a couple things. I'm going to just jump to it right now because uh, I, we had a follow-up. I actually have two follow-ups this week. We had a follow-up on uh, the John Stamos situation. Ah, uh, yes. 
So that's why my brain is thinking about Florida. I apologize. Uh, Kokomo from the Beach Boys. Two episodes ago, I believe it was two. Was it three episodes ago? I don't know. However long ago, when we did the episode on 1988, we talked about the uh, song from the Beach Boys, Kokomo, and I had said that uh, John Stamos was in the music video for that. Even when I was going back to find footage of that, I found like a grainy fo- a film of it, and I was like, "Is that really him, or am I just making like? Does it just look like it might be him, or is it really him?" Turns out, it really is him. Uh, he absolutely was in the video for Kokomo, and not only that, but John Stamos, not Jesse from Jesse Kinsopoulos. Yeah, not Jesse Kinsopoulos from Full House, but actual John Stamos played with the band Beach Boy, the Beach Boys. So then I Googled, hey, did, <laughs> did John Stamos play with the Beach Boys? And it turns out, yes. Like, like- a month ago. A month ago. <laughs> <laughs> in December. Like just before Christmas, they were playing a show. He was playing in a show with the Beach Boys, who are like 100 years old at this point. Uh, but yeah. So you're technically correct. Yeah. yeah. John Stamos uh, not only played with the Beach Boys, is still playing with the Beach Boys. Still a member. <laughs> yeah. He is one of the new boys. Yeah, I did find uh, that he has actually, a couple of years ago, and I think it was during like the pandemic, because every video I saw was him doing a Skype interview. But he went on some kind of little roundabout thing where he was going on various different talk shows. And he tells the story that he went to a Beach Boys concert when he was on... General Hospital. So before Full House, he was on General Hospital and he got invited backstage and a bunch of girls were following him. And uh, one of the... John Stamos? Yeah, John Stamos. One of the... Well, he was on General Hospital, so he was on a, a, a soap. Mm-hmm. And, and he's John uh, Stamos. And he's John Stamos. Yeah, if you can imagine. <laughs> and I think, it, is it Mike Love? I believe his name is. Uh, one of the Beach Boys said, uh, do girls always follow him around? Yes. Get him on stage. <laughs> Literally how he joined the Beach Boys. <laughs> Hot girls are following him. <clears throat> Make him hit the bongos. We got yes. the new, we got the new <laughs> Give him a drum. <laughs> Give him one drum. I, I just loved it because I remembered him being in that video and then still was like, I, I, I swear I'm just transplanting that. That can't be real. No, it was real. Uh, absolutely. 100%. It's still happening. St- still happening. Still playing with the Beach Boys. So. Uh, that's the one follow-up. We had another follow-up, though, that I wanted to continue as well. Uh, same episode, We you had talked about a lady that fell out of a plane. Yes. And uh, somebody actually in the comments on, on our video uh, posted a link to the actual story about this lady. And uh, Scott, do you have it? Uh, yeah, I thought she died relatively quickly yep. after yep. this thing happened. Uh, it turns out, no, this the she fell... The well, all right, we'll just read. Yeah, it let's just read it. A, let's go. It's a story. Um, Vesna Vulovic, an air stewardess who survived the highest ever fall by a human being after her plane broke up at thirty three thousand feet. Jeez. Yeah, has died, aged sixty six. Yep. So this now art- this was from twenty sixteen. Yep. So yep. And uh, it happened in like 1972. Yep, 72. She was working on a Yugoslav Airlines in January 1972 when a suspected bomb brought the plane down among mountains in Czechoslovakia. All 27 other passengers and crew died. Uh, According to investigators, Vulovic was trapped by a food cart in the plane's tail section as it plummeted to earth in freezing temperatures. The tail landed in a heavily wooded and snow-blanketed part of a mountainside, which was thought to have cushioned the impact. Crazy. She was rescued by Bruno Honky, a woodsman, who heard her screaming in the dark. <laughs> the Honky Woodsman. Honky Bruno <laughs> Honky Woodsman. They're just ma- That's what he told you his name was. <laughs> just making things up. I uh, heard her screaming in the dark while the debris debris came down around them. It was suspected that a bomb was planted inside the jet during a stopover in Copenhagen, Denmark. Mm-hmm. But as nothing is... was ever proven and no arrests were made. Yeah. Copenhagen, so as Somebody as blew up this plane. Yep. Nobody knows why and or who she, it was. And she just rode the, got jammed in the back of the tail section is at least how I'm envisioning right. it is. Uh, food cart food pushes cart, her to the yeah. back, yeah, and yep. just rides the and back. And then it's that. probably like the gravitron. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're just yeah. just can't move. Yeah. 
Well, it says in there later that she has no recollection of it whatsoever. Yeah. You so, don't say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she fell into a coma <laughs> for 10 days, had a fractured skull, two crushed vertebrae, and a broken her pelvis, several ribs, and, bro- and both legs. And some short-term memory. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it turns out I don't remember any of that. They say it happened. I don't know. <clears throat> they tell me the guy's name is Bruno Hunky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a woodsman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she made that woodsman. name up. Woodsman. She made that up. Yeah. For sure. She's like, no. Bruno Hunky, the woodsman, saved me. <laughs> Just let her go with it. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah. You know what? She's had a really hard time. It's been a rough couple been, of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> let, it, let her have it. Let her have it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that was a great follow-up. I, I really appreciated uh Yeah, somebody just uh, posted that link on a comment to our video that we posted for that. So <clears throat> just follow-ups left and right mm-hmm. going on. Uh, absolutely. Unbelievable. 33,000 or was it 32,000? 33,000. 33,000 30, Was it 32? What do you who gives a shit? <laughs> 33,000 or 32,000 feet in the air that it she is. fell from? <laughs> It is. Oh, it was, only, th- oh, it was only 32? Yeah, no big deal. 33? Is, she made that up. We got to have an exact record. It is the highest any human has ever <laughs> fallen. Guinness, Guinness Book of World Records. Listen, she we holds can, it. We can't have someone falling 32,075 feet. We got to know. <laughs> we got to know exactly how far it was. Also, how do you know? I suppose the black box, probably. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Th- yeah, planes are meticulously. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh... Recorded, sure. Recorded, Data, observed, obs- tracked. Yeah, tracked. there you go. Tracked is probably a good one. Sure. Yeah, that's good enough. I've got an idea. They should make the plane yes. out of <laughs> the black box <laughs> material. It sounds like they need to make it out of the food cart material. <laughs> Freaking rode that shit down. <clears throat> yeah. Ah, oh, great. Yeah. Good follow-up. <laughs> good follow-up. 2016. That's all right. No, just listen. Yeah, here's more about this story. Here's the thing I heard about. I know nothing (laughs) about. She's dead. (laughs) (laughs) But she lived a lot longer. She did a lot longer. She did live a lot longer. All right, let's let's uh, bring. She died after falling thirty three thousand, which is crazy. Yeah, well after fifty years after. Let's bring it home. Um, do you want me to talk about checks mix? Yeah, I do. I want to know. I want to know. So here's what happened. I went into the gas station the other day, and you know you got the end dials or the end caps, and there were checks Mix, which I enjoy a lot, I, but evidently I don't enjoy it as much as I thought because on the package of the checks Mix says, the bagel chip is back. I said, where, where the fuck did the bagel chip go? And why? And why is it back? What happened? So I demanded of Scott, I want an investigation into where the hell did the bagel chip go, when, why, and how? And why is it back? Ladies and gentlemen. Scott. Did, did the people demand it? The people did demand it over All the right. last... Over the last uh, Ten years or so. Ten years. They've been you signing had one petitions. You're in your twenties. There hasn't been bagel chips in there for ten years. Stop what you're doing and listen. This that's, is that's what they say. I uh, see. This is Man- Mandela effect right here. There's been bagel chips in there for sure, for sure. Right? Am I wrong? I don't eat Chex Mix. How do you not eat Chex Mix? Never. In your life? Well, I mean, maybe yeah. maybe some Gardettos. Oh, Gardettos are good as well. They've got bagel chips. I'm a big fan of Gardettos. Actually, I'm a huge fan of just the backstories on snacks. Gardetto's mm. has a good one. It's always the immigrants that are making, you know, and then they're like, oh, we got these leftover ends from yeah, the bread. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right. I'm just going to make fantastic snacks. Yeah, I, I have not found a reason. So they just got rid of them like 10 years ago? I, all right, listeners, I need you to chime in. You have to tell me, were you aware that the bagel chips were gone? They were remo- removed in all varieties in 2009. In 2009? Yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about. Of course they're back. And that, damn it, the people should have demanded it sooner. It took 13 years to get a bagel chip? To get the bagel chip back. <clears throat> yeah. I was, think, I was thinking it was going to be something where they were going to claim, you know, like supply chain, you know, it was going to be a COVID thing. It's like, ah, oh, we can't, that bread... The, the the most simple piece we have in the whole thing we can't really be made to to keep those but uh, this is this is insanity to me right on the front of the package too big bold letters the bagel chip is back bagel is back oh. if you were to pick somebody to be your spokesman to say bagel is back who would it be oh I don't know that's a tough question <clears throat> well I tell you the answer <laughs> is Sir Mix a Lot bagel is back bagel is back all right oh so, yeah. So now we're just 
being an advertisement for <laughs> Chex Mix. <laughs> which we should be. And Sir Mix-a-Lot. Which we should be. So the bagel is back. The bagel is back, huh? Yep. I haven't seen anything with Sir Mix-a-Lot, so they must be slow on getting the actual campaign out. Because I just saw this on an end cap. This, <clears> these <throat> products are on shelves. Is this from 2016, too? It must be. Well, I don't know. 2009, you've blown my mind. Uh, this article of Chex Mix is bringing back the whatever, yep. the bagel chips. It's from chip. one, one, January 11th of this year. <laughs> yeah. So just a couple weeks. And this is when I saw it. I was going to bring it up last <clears> week. <throat> Uh, we didn't have time within the podcast. Um, I, I'm sorry. I, maybe I maybe there aren't as many people out there that feel the way that I do about this. But uh, one, I like you, my snacks and I cannot. I like my snacks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll play that. I'll I'll, I'll edit that in. <laughs> I like my snacks and I cannot lie. But that's one thing I despise. It's a bag of snacks that basic taste, and it seems like such a waste. Cause you're hungry, and it ain't enough. Eat a snack with a mix of stuff. Chex Mix ain't no comparing. I'm hooked, but I'm down with sharing. Oh, baby, you can find me crunching in the studio munching. My homeboys tried to warn me, cause that crunch you got makes me so hungry. But, oh, something's missing, and you're wondering where it's been. Well, excuse me, excuse me. You know I need a mix to move me. Now, Chex Mix, give your task. I'm telling you, I ain't gonna ask. We need another hit in the membership. Gotta bring back the bagel chip. The bagel is back. Uh, taking a few minutes from his day to speak about all things remixes and Chex Mix, Sir Mix-a-Lot shares that his favorite part of Chex Mix is actually not the bagel chip. Yeah, because it hasn't been there for a decade. Well, either has he. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, I'm old school. Give me the actual original Chex. Every morning. Just every morning. Oh, breakfast? All right. Yeah. I'm not saying that because I'm getting down with the company. I actually eat them every morning. The Honey Nut Chex. Okay. When asked what else should be remixed beyond his era-defining song about luscious booties to be, to be about the crispy round crispy round question mark bagel chip, Sir Mix a Lot veered from the topic of food entirely. Electric cars <laughs> should be remixed. I don't have one, but I want to get one. But why do they all have to look like a bar of soap? <laughs> Give me some unnecessary fins and stuff, just so I can say this car is cool. Give me a little fake noise. I like the fake noise. <laughs> <laughs> I, he has also what, become an old man. What, yeah. <laughs> when I asked about where the bagel chip went, I had no idea this is where this was going. Records are mixed a lot. What happened to bagel chips? Well, let me tell you what Sir mix a lot also wants you know in his else, life. You know what else I don't like? He wants fins on his electric car and fake <laughs> noise. He wants it to go vroom. <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's a good enough stop yeah, yeah. Part, uh, spot to stop. Thank you, Scott. Yes, that was indeed. great, as always. Uh, see, sometimes you just know. There, there are moments in life that uh, you just immediately know there's something going on there, and that's when I turned the corner and was like, what in the hell are you talking about? They're back? Where have they, got, where have they gone? <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, Sir Mix-a-Lot is here to tell us where they were. Uh, fantastic. Thank you, Scott. Yes, of course. Uh, and over to Gabe. Uh, thank you, Gabe. Thank you, Dave. I got another follow-up. Yeah, let's do it. You know, uh, kicking back to last week's episode yes. with uh, Kevin Yeager on, I watched Blood Simple this yes. week. Yes, okay. And you got glimpses of where the Coen brothers were going with their career. It wasn't the best movie, but the private detective, yep. the private investigator guy, an all-time great Coen brothers character. Yeah. Like, it's uh, worth the watch just for him. Definitely worth the watch. Uh, a little slower, but not... Not overly slow. You know, you start getting back into the 70s and, and movies really dip down in, in the pacing of them. Um, felt did you, did you feel that it felt like it was kind of ahead of its time in that it, it felt like a movie they would have made in the, in the 90s? Yep. Yeah. They, they easily could have. And, you know, they kept it simple. Yeah. Right? They had five characters. It was they, unbelievable. They made a good effort at trying to develop a good story for all five of the characters in the movie. And yeah. Well worth the watch. Yeah, there's not a lot of extra people just floating around that. It's a very simple tale about uh, a murder plot that then leads to a series of unfortunate misunderstandings. <laughs> <laughs> and would you would you That's agree with that assessment? Description. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, I would highly recommend. And that was one. Of, that was actually one of the ones that came out of that episode that I really enjoyed. Go back and listen to that uh, episode two sixteen with Kevin Yeager where we talk about movies from the eighties. Um, 
There were a couple movies that I forgot to bring up that I had on my list. Harry and the Hendersons. I wanted to throw that out there. When he asked, like, your guilty pleasure, that should have been my guilty pleasure. I have pleasure. always loved that movie, and I don't think I've ever actually seen it. Really? <laughs> Just wow. the premise. Like, He's I re- good enough. I remember watching it as a kid. Yep, and I can remember glimpses of it, and just thinking it was a cool movie. Yep, and I didn't realize that it was actually a relatively large yeah. movie. I thought yeah. it was something like the No Mobile or something. <laughs> Those old movies that Grandma and Grandpa had. Calm down, the No Mobile is like, amazing. Like Violent Night. <laughs> uh, speaking of Violent Night, I'm going to get to that in one second. But uh, the uh, Harry and the Henderson, John Lithgow, come on, mm-hmm. yeah, they're um, actually the dude that played uh, Harry. Is actually the same actor that played Chewbacca. Uh, no, oh, that'd be so great. <laughs> Close though, the Predator. Oh, huh. yeah, same dude. So, hmm. yeah, and I think maybe I maybe that. the alien as well, but I might be incorrect about that. But I'm pretty sure he was the Predator. Um, <clears throat> following back up. Oh, first of all, there's one part in that movie that I absolutely love. He there's a scene where they're trying to get Harry into the car, and they're they've got cheeseburgers and they're trying to get him to eat the burgers and john lithgow opens the burger and keeps the burger in the wrapper and as a kid i was like what in the hell is going on blew my mind i had no idea that anyone had ever attempted to eat a hamburger still in the wrapper like just unfolding it just a little bit and holding it like a little napkin Like, like, like a burrito genius genius needs to be done more often more people need to adapt that okay back to violent night you bring that up and you think you're just, you know, tossing it out there. But today there is news that they have started pre-production on Violent Night 2. The night just got violent. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just going to say, what are we going to call it? It's definitely not going to be Violent Night 2. No. Violenter Night? Yes. Uh, yeah, more violence. Uh, I'll tell you this, though. I, I, I'm a little disappointed. So the movie cost about $20 million to make. It made about $75 million, plus it's just going to continue to to make more money now that it's out and about. Um, but uh, that's enough to make a sequel. Same guys are coming back on. <clears throat> There's some things that they said about it that are making me nervous, though. They specifically said they want to dive into his backstory and you, you lost me. I The thing I said that I really enjoyed about that movie was you, you created this concept of like where he came from. And it's cool enough for nerdy people to be like, oh, that's kind of cool. But the idea that we actually want to see that is... Right, right. <laughs> there's just, a reason for it. Just to be it. a tiny little yep. backdrop yep. of the movie as a whole yep. works. Yep. But to have that be the movie yep. is about that tiny little aspect yep and in, in watching <clears throat> violent night i both times that that starts to happen i was like Fuck, you're gonna you're gonna ruin it for me don't do it i don't need i don't need that i don't need an explanation the dude santa yeah. claus i mean come right. on move uh, on it's the star wars syndrome yep of go oh, we gotta make a yes. han solo movie we gotta find out where he got his vest <laughs> like <laughs> <who gives shit? laughs> you know what i don't care about mm-hmm. that move mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. uh but yeah it's that that uh, i'm assuming probably won't come out next year uh, i would assume it'll take a while but uh i i'm on board until i'm not so uh, i still if you haven't watched it i know christmas is over but violent night is is a ton of fun uh, but the things that I really liked about it, it sounds like they're going to screw up in the mm. sequel. So screw that. Oh. Anyways, uh, I think that's a good episode. I think uh, the news, as always, is fantastic. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on these bagel chips, make sure they don't disappear again. Uh, the lady falling out of the plane, uh, you know, God rest her soul. But uh, phenomenal. What a freaking story. Too bad you can't remember any of it. <laughs> yeah. I want to know what it's like. I want, I want to know what it's like <clears throat> falling from the sky. It kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably what her quote would have been. And and explain that. Yeah, what was it's... it like? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Until Hunky Woodsman yeah. <laughs> <laughs> showed up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back next week. Uh, I think we got a game coming up next week, but we'll see what happens. Otherwise, we'll be back. And uh, as always, we're done.